What's up, everybody? It's LG Set here. You're listening to The First Mint, a podcast where I talk about NFTs and the world of Web3. The podcast comes out every Monday morning and occasionally on Wednesdays. If you like this content and you want some more, feel free to visit our Twitter page at The First Mint. So today's episode is actually kind of out there, uh, a, a little off the wall, because last week was a pretty crazy week. And it's a reminder, weeks like last week, a reminder that things can come all the way back down to earth. You know that this can happen and that it will happen. And when it does happen, it's kind of a, it's, it's a terrible feeling because although not everything went to zero, it probably got about halfway there last week for most people. But that's a good reset. It's a good reminder that those things do happen. And it's a good time for a mental reset on what's actually going on there for yourself and rather a conversation about trust and knowing what to trust in crypto, who to trust, and kind of what it is that we looked for in trust or what we are looking for in trust. And of course, how to trust in yourself. What's interesting is that I I set out to write this pod originally wanting to interview someone that I really believe in, someone reliable. And I didn't know exactly who that was going to be. So I messaged a handful of friends on like Wednesday or Thursday last week, people that I feel like I've known for a long time and whose opinion on a major market downfall in crypto and NFTs is somebody's opinion that I'm going to trust. And I feel like everybody else who listens is going to trust as well. I asked some people, hey, would you come on the pod? Come talk about the market with me. Uh, Help me zoom the way out and maybe give some anecdotes about what this kind of compares to. And if you're comfortable chat about nfts and you know what you're collecting now getting a guest for a pod is neither easy nor hard i like to try and find a topic to discuss with somebody right rather than just have them on for like a one-on-one interview i try and have them on for a conversation and often it kind of lands in between them it's kind of like an interview conversation but you know you guys listen you know i try and kind of have this back and forth overall though when i ask people it's usually like like 98% yes. Like people rarely ever say no. And I try to pick people specifically that I feel like are going to say yes, right? Because I, I just, you know, I just it makes it easier, man. You know, we don't have a huge team here. It's hard to make podcasts. So I just try and, you know, get get easy guests that I know are going to, I are going to say yes. And, and most of them do. There's maybe like a handful of no's ever doing first mint. And usually they're circumstantial. But this time I got no's all around the table. One person said they needed to take a step back from just everything happening right now. One person told me it wasn't enough time to prepare for the questions, which is which is fair. Even though I want a general conversation, these are big questions. One person didn't respond. And among the no's that I got, there was kind of like a resounding theme and message to me. And it was that I'm not ready to talk about that right now. You know, it, I could tell that there's a lot of weight on everybody's shoulders, which really struck me because the people I asked... There are people that I, I I would assume are maybe not above all of this, but they're like crypto veterans and people that I'm like, this person knows what's going on with the market. Even though everything might be like a circus in NFTs right now, they're 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 likely down like everybody else, but surely they are taking this as a signal to start buying because they've been through these cycles. Like I kind of assume that they are above this type of stuff because they have a, a much longer long-term view. But they did it. And I'm alone on the show to talk about trust in the space. This is the first minute. So before we get back into it, just a reminder that the live show is starting this week. That's right. Literally, I haven't told a single person other than Phil, but we are back for the live show on Wednesday, five o'clock. Pacific. That's right. New time, I guess. We used to do it on Fridays and then we did it on Thursdays. And now it's going to be Wednesday. It's going to be Wednesday, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. The live show is back. Me and Phil D and different guests. You guys watched in the past. We have a very good time. It'll also be a little bit more like a podcast now. So you guys will be able to, to listen to it the next day. It'll be a little bit more conversational. Maybe we'll still have a lot of fun. Uh, but we'll definitely be a, a little bit chattier and, and that'll kind of function as our as our second podcast through the week from the first minute beyond my my Monday one. Now, today's pod, there's no other way around it. Obviously, times are rough in crypto right now. And for many, including me and you, we're new here and we're not really used to this, honestly. And even if you are, it's still not very pretty. Even if you've been around since Bitcoin 2013 or whatever, that's the year people always use. I've obviously spent, like probably many people, or maybe 
maybe some people didn't. Maybe they got away from it, which is good. But I spent a lot of time combing Twitter and Discord. I just want to know kind of what people are saying, how they're feeling, right? And my God, like what is going on out there, right? Like I know I've written a couple of hilarious tweets maybe this week, depending how you look at them. Um, but outside of that, it honestly seems like the NFT community has like lost its mind. People in DeFi don't have this problem. Like the, like the, you know, maybe some people who had a lot of holdings in this Luna thing, if anybody, you know, followed the Luna and UST kind of collapse. Uh, people that holdings in that that are DeFi people, they're definitely down bad. But most people in DeFi have probably a lot of holdings in other coins, like in Ethereum. And probably a lot of people have some Bitcoin and um, I don't know, some Uniswap or something. I don't know what people do in DeFi these days. But still, they're probably pretty calm through this because they've been through it. And they also have a much longer term outlook on crypto. So DeFi, Ethereum people, although down bad like everybody else, they're used to it. They're here for the long term. They've got holdings for the long term. So they don't they don't really seem quite as uh, disturbed, I would say. I even I got this one really great tweet from uh, at I'm Bagsy. Bagsy is a verified guy. Seems like a person who tweets a lot about crypto. He said, if you think crypto is dead, you really haven't been around long enough. With that said, it might very well take a long time to recover in price, but it's becoming harder and harder to kill as time goes on. Something, something effect. I don't know if he's like kidding there or not, but I like that tweet. It's just like, that's true. Like like people that have been here for a while, they know it's good insight. But for the NFT community, this has been absolutely bonkers because this community hasn't been around that long. There's no like NFTs 2013. And if, well, maybe there is a 2017, but it's so small compared to how many people are here. Most of the people here are new to this type of asset, asset class. And it's been completely crazy. If you follow kind of the more general NFT news, the guy who started Azuki's, which was a really expensive Ethereum project that at one point traded for like 20 or 30 ETH each. Uh, turns out he was behind a bunch of other failed projects uh, that didn't do well in ETH and is this kind of, you know, absent founder guy. And that turned into this whole fiasco. The price went all over the place. People didn't like that. And most of us are just trying to figure out what is going on with this ape land. Dapper, for their part, well, Dapper, uh, not as not as um, a scandalous, I'd say, recently. Things are, are relatively calm, I would say, with, with playoffs and all the other sports. But still, still a couple whispers of insider trading with like the some people bought all day moments uh, a few hours before the challenge was announced or something like that. Phil D was all over, but I, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't know if there's, I haven't investigated that. So don't take my word for it. I just know that there's some rumors of that. Anyways, lots of stuff going on. And to top it off, this past weekend, there's this one guy on Twitter. Uh, he tweeted, and this is like, he has like an ape photo. He has like a bored ape photo as his thing. He tweeted, if you are rocking a PFP under 100K, please don't at me or share your opinion on my wall. I don't care what you have to say. Reality is you need to work harder, move out of your mom's basement, stack ETH slash soul, buy a few real PFP, then share it, your opinion. And absolutely, uh, I don't even know what the right word is for that, but a pretty uh, auda audacious, audacious tweet to put out there for somebody who has like a monkey cartoon that's worth a lot of money for some reason is their thing. And that quote became like an instant meme where now I feel like if you don't have 100K PFP, it's kind of like part of the NFT vernacular. Like that's definitely going to live on for a while. I have so many, so many questions about that tweet as well. Like he said on his wall, like, don't at me or share your opinion on my wall. Like who, what do you mean a social media wall? That's from like Facebook in 2008. Like that doesn't exist anymore. So I'm not even sure if this tweet was real. Even if it was, I think that this can actually be kind of excused right now. And I don't mean necessarily for saying things like this and demeaning people in such an awful way with a tweet like that, this classist kind of tweet. But I mean more, you can excuse people for maybe being shocked that somebody would say that. Because we don't really have like much precedent here in NFTs. We haven't really decided who we are or like what this community is. So naturally, there are going to be a lot of people maybe like this that are here. And there are a lot of different types of people, other kind of strange different types of, of, of scammers or, or not necessarily scammers, just people that are assholes or, or, or nice people. But just like so, there's so many different types of people that are in NFTs. and We don't really know who they are yet. Right. We don't really know what kind of people are going to form which communities in NFTs. So it's really hard to see who's who's trustworthy, right? And 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 who 
is going to be here for a long time and who won't say things like that after you've been following them for a long time. And that's kind of what I wanted to get some people on the show to talk about. I wanted to be like, hey, listen, like I, I trust you. I know you're not going to say crazy things like that. Like, like, tell me what's going on, what your opinion is. But they didn't. So here we are. It's Sunday evening and I'm alone trying to make sense of all this. The NFT Twitter community is losing its mind. And honestly, like that's another reason we're actually bringing back the live show before I get into the trust part is like, you know, we need to be more conversational, right? It's been, I've been having a great time doing these pods alone for a bit uh, and a couple interviews, but man, we got to get back out there in the general conversation, man. I always love hearing what Phil D has to say and everybody else that comes on the show. We always have great guests. So very excited to reboot that, to kind of get that conversation going again, chat about this kind of stuff with other people, people we talk to regularly, uh, you know, get the friends and family back together, as you could say to help understand trust in the space with them and here tonight as well, or this morning, whatever time you're listening to. So trust in the space. How do we establish trust in the space? How do we determine what trust is and who we trust and how we want to trust and all the things around trust? Just think about what that means to you right now, the word trust in crypto, right? Shady. It's so shady at times. How can you even think of a word trust? But there's a lot of trust. And... You know, there's a lot of examples we could talk about. Like, oh, who who do you trust? Like, oh, some of the voices in the community, you know, like I said, or some of the communities that we're in, like people I know. And, um, you know, for me, in terms of like trust of like, oh, you know, how do I make like trading decisions or how do I know what project to get or what what the info is? Like, I'll usually just kind of look for like-minded people to me. But that's not, I don't necessarily mean people that we, you know, make a list of the people you trust. I think we can go deeper with that, with the theme of trust and kind of into what trust is all about. I tried to do a bit of research on this. Like, what is trust? Like, what are the, the principles of trust, right? And all I could find were these like Harvard business reviews about like how to manage people, how to be like an effective leader of trust and blah, blah, blah. Wasn't really doing it for me, but I did find one good post uh, on a site called uxdesign.cc. So take that for whatever kind of clickbait, uh, you know, content site it is uh, by Basil Deeb, uh, a design ops specialist in London. And he had this article about online work culture and how to work with your colleagues, like how to establish trust with your colleagues, which I thought maybe like that's maybe kind of similar to what we have in the NFT community. Like imagine we are a company where there's 100,000 people that work here, all with different roles, all trying to create an economy, all trying to kind of sneak around each other. That's kind of what we have. And we all do it online. So I figured that an article about building trust in like an online work culture is, is similar enough maybe to what we're doing in terms of kind of tr- trying to figure out what trust means. So in this article, there are four elements of trust okay integrity dependability affinity benevolence integrity is admitting mistakes showing lack of knowledge honesty authenticity being what you say you are that is the integrity part of this online like like together culture the second one dependability in that section it says that trust is an invisible social contract and that the binding clause of it is building a sense of camaraderie with others. A great way of doing so is by delivering tasks and projects jointly. So instead of locking yourself in your silo, invite them in and deliver for and with them. That's dependability. The third one is affinity, a sense of closeness, open and vulnerable. It's, 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 it's kind of like we're in a men's group right now. <laughs> I don't mean to make fun of men's group. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, I just think it's funny. It's like we're, we're chatting the street, but I'd like talking alone, but feel close with other people that we're talking about this together. So if you guys are listening, I hope you're, you're vibing <laughs> with this, whatever this is. Okay. Anyways, we're talking about trust, <laughs> affinity. It's a sense of closeness, open and vulnerable, and establish an environment of virtue. Definitely a lot of virtue uh, in NFTs if you if you peruse Twitter. And the last one, benevolence, is doing things for others, helping and listening to people a lot. So maybe that's like a good way to kind of like look at like every process and every entity in crypto, or maybe even think about how we can apply these. Like, do we apply these to each other? If people we know, companies, brands, NFTs, DAOs, like which do we kind of look for that in those organizations? Um, the system after all of blockchain is supposed to be trustless. So that kind of makes a lot of sense. And maybe a way to look at it is to think about where and how we spend our time socializing. Right. And they didn't really say this in there, but again, thinking about that, this is like, 
you know, trust for online communities or online workplaces, I really do think that maybe the platforms, like where we spend that time matters the most. And what we do in crypto is Discord and Twitter. That is where we spend our time interacting with each other and potentially looking for this trust. You know, I find it really fascinating how people use those social networks in crypto. Like it's, it's so different than what other people do on the internet. Like we use those to like govern and also share so many different things, to have so many different micro communities, but where you can easily teleport from one to the next, from one medium to the next so easily. And you get something out of each of those communities. If you zoom way out, the NFT ecosystem, community included, matches a lot of the stuff on this trust list, right? Integrity, dependability, affinity, benevolence. The space catches up with bad actors. It's getting more dependable, yes, and supposed to be that way anyway. It's supposed to be trustless and dependable. We all feel very tight-knit to each other, right? A little bit of that affinity. And people definitely help each other. Even if it's just making content and making memes and stuff like that. Like People do give a lot of themselves and their time in crypto and NFTs, especially our corner. So what does that mean for us? Like, Who do we know what to trust? Maybe we just kind of trust the system. Like I've always felt the system of crypto and NFT is kind of what it makes it unique and worth believing in. And I don't mean that in a cheesy way because like, it's like, oh, the community here, everybody's so nice. But I mean, like, like literally maybe the one thing I trust the most is the way we trust this system of communities. Like we trust these groups of people that we've kind of designated and that you kind of go jump in and out of and that that is where you collect and govern information. I think that that is like, maybe that is where there's a trust. There's this kind of like assumed trust that bad actors are weeded out and that things, things are kind of pretty clear in terms of what they are. Anyway, I told you guys I was off the wall today. Have a thought on that. Think about what trust is to you. I want to hear from you. And outside of that, honestly, I want to know what people are holding right now. Do you still have a lot of Top Shot? Do you have other Dapper products? Do you have other NFTs, things on ETH, Solana? Do you have cash? Maybe that's the smartest thing. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear how much cash you have if you have some or too many or whatever. I don't care. I want to know what kind of NFTs you're looking at, what you're holding. If you sold some stuff last week, that's great. Good. Take, take. If it's a profit, I hope it's profit for you. If it's not, well, whatever. You know, you got to cut losses. I want to hear what you're holding. I want to hear what you guys have because I feel like I haven't really chatted with the audience in a while. So I want to hear you guys. Uh, shoot me a DM, please. Um, uh, email hello at thefirstmint.com, anything. I just want to know what you guys got going on because if you're still here, I'm very happy that you are still here. And that is going to do it for us today, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Again, I want to hear your thoughts. Again, Wednesday, we got the live show coming back. So make sure you check it out on the first minute.